This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. Another battleground has been named in the wrangle for Taswater. Premier Will Hodgman claims the East Coast runs the risk of losing tourism unless water and sewerage infrastructure is urgently upgraded. But opponents say the government is exaggerating the problem. The Premier checks out some boutique Bishano accommodation, but he says the town's water and sewerage situation is far less inviting. Bishno has suffered from sewerage outflows um, in recent years. Seven sewerage spills to be exact since July 2014. The figures used by the government to slap down Taswater's work in the region, timed only days before draft legislation for a takeover is set to be released. It'll be good for our brand, uh, it'll be good for public health. But promoting a dirty perception of the region's water isn't good, according to opponents. The fact that the, 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 the Treasurer has come out and said we're, we have a water and sewage system similar to third world countries, it's absolutely outrageous and ridiculous. At a time when division boils over whether the government really will do a better job, with Taswater releasing a statement saying it's carrying out upgrades in Bishano as part of its long-term statewide renewal program. We're getting on with it and within 12 months all boiled water alerts right across the state will be removed. While businesses just want the problem fixed. We should expect high quality, decent quality water supply. Tourism is thriving on the East Coast, largely due to its growing popularity among Asian visitors. But if infrastructure doesn't keep up, the government warns water and sewerage problems will just get worse and worse. Because under the Taswater plan, at the end of 10 years, they still had $400 million worth of backlog renewals that they hadn't even attempted to start. But the opposition hints the next place we'll all be visiting as a result of this is the ballot box. So whether they want to use it as a trigger for an election, I tell you what, we're ready to go. <laughs> and we've got an alternative that I think people will like. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Farmers fear the viability of Tasmania's blueberry industry is being threatened by a crippling fungal disease amid concern it could spread statewide. Industry representatives believe the management of the latest blueberry rust incursion has been bungled, with calls for a public inquiry. It's these rust-like markings that can end a blueberry farmer's livelihood. And three years ago, it did for two separate farms in the state's northwest. Now a third incursion detected in August last year hangs over the heads of growers, as the blueberry rust management is limited to containment rather than eradication. We consider it is a crisis. We have a very short period of opportunity to actually be able to effectively manage the current incursions. And the plan should be about eradication. It shouldn't be about managing it. This has been the issue since, uh, since August last year. Industry representatives say they've been left in the dark as to why eradication hasn't been carried out. The crippling fungal disease threatening to spread, jeopardising key export markets. Victoria will require certain conditions to be met before we can export into Victoria. Uh, South Australia the same, Western Australia the same. Potentially arduous protocols to weigh down on growers already bearing the cost of preventative measures such as sprays and treatments to ward off the debilitating fungal rust. It could range from a lot of you know, chemical applications which organic growers is real concern to them. The blueberry industry is calling for a public inquiry amid a deteriorating confidence in the disease handling by Biosecurity Tasmania and the Primary Industries Minister. What expert advice is actually being relied upon to, to undertake the protocols that we want in place? In a statement, Biosecurity Tasmania said a containment response allows access to domestic markets, a decision based on considerations to the success of eradication, possible reinfection and the economic impact. We will always listen to the views of industry. Uh, we are well aware of the risks. The rust does not pose a threat to consumers. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Tasmanians are being reminded to dispose of marine gear and rubbish appropriately after a young seal was found entangled in net at Scamander. Reports of the seal were first received earlier this month, but the injured animal wasn't located until two days ago. Rescuers say the net was cutting through the seal's skin and the situation could have ended fatally. Luckily, the seal was set free and was last observed swimming out to sea. 
38 unwanted or unregistered firearms have been handed into Tasmania police as part of a national gun amnesty. Rifles, shotguns, a pistol and shortened firearms were surrendered at a mobile site in Launceston today. We want to get all the unregistered firearms we can off the street, um, but we'll even take registered firearms if people don't want them anymore. So it is unlawful to have a unregistered firearm and uh, this is an opportunity for people to hand them in and not have any fear of being prosecuted. Tasmania police believe there are still thousands of unregistered firearms across the state. They can be surrendered at any police station, no questions asked. Dark Mofo has made an announcement and you might want to get your diary ready. It's released a video with a compilation of highlights from this year's festival. It was accompanied with the big reveal, the confirmation of dates for next year. Dark Mofo returns to Hobart on the 15th to the 24th of June 2018. Traffic headaches in Hobart have sparked plans for another possible transport option. A roundtable discussion today looking at the feasibility of a commuter ferry system on the River Derwent. A roundtable discussion prompting some fiery opinions. Dangerous it is to operate a piece of machinery called a motor vehicle. Honestly, I'd rather take a ferry. Of course, we always there's a lot of talk about ferries and we want to see some action, but I think we, we might have stirred the possum. Today's meeting attended by more than 40 members discussing the latest considerations around a new transport system. Vessels are already plying the waters of the River Derwent to transport visitors to Mona. Whether this is also an option of a commuter system now under discussion. Common issues raised the recent influx of tourists on the city, increasing traffic congestion and the waterway not being used to its full potential. If it can form a part of our transport network going forward, like it has in the past, then we should consider that. And at the moment we have what's a mounting crisis in the city of congestion and this won't solve all the problems but what we've got to do is look at it like a jigsaw puzzle. All of those outer suburbs are well served by ferries and would actually be quicker than using your car. The meeting not getting to the bottom of solving all major issues. Getting the land for the terminals and also getting the park and ride facilities around from each of the neighbouring councils. What we actually need is an integrated transport plan for the city that brings it all together and that plan must be in the context of a strategic plan that covers every aspect of the city. Hobart City Council will prepare a report from today's forum. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. It seems the sky's the limit for Hobart's housing boom, with the median house price recording its highest growth rate in almost 15 years. A new property market report from Domain is labelling Hobart the best performing capital in the country for the June quarter. The median house price rising by 4.3%, now exceeding $400,000. 331 to 404000 over the over that 12-month period. Industry experts say the shortage of property in Hobart is helping drive the price rises, while Hobart is also boasting the highest unit rental yields. Tasmanian infant formula company Bellamy's has suffered a battering on the stock market as a trading halt was lifted. When the ASX opened this morning, Bellamy's shares plummeted more than 12% to $5.88. They gradually regained ground but were still down 5% by the close. Bellamy's was forced into a trading halt two weeks ago after Chinese authorities suspended a licence for its newly acquired canning facility in Victoria. A robotic traffic controller is set to turn heads during a trial at roadwork sites in the northwest over the coming weeks. Meet Worksite Willie. He stands and waves an illuminated baton to signal drivers that workers are nearby. It's part of an effort to keep human staff safely away from traffic. Willie will become a permanent fixture with civil construction company Stornoway if the trial is effective. Ballroom dancers across the state are stepping up their training regimes ahead of the Tasmanian Open Dance Sport Championships. Competitors have just three more weeks to perfect their routines before all the glitz and glamour goes on show.
It's on the dance floor where Dinah and Greg Crawford's love first blossomed. Dinah was doing an exam. Oh, yes, I think you came along to watch. I the came, yes. yep, just to watch. Mm. And then I went along for some lessons and the dance instructor said, oh, I know there's a good girl here, she'll be a good partner for you. Now, after a 20-year break, the couple are well and truly back in the swing of it. In three weeks, they'll compete in their fourth Tasmanian Open Dance Sport Championship. We're in the Open New Vogue, which is um, in the Masters 2, which is our age group, and it's a huge field. And we're blessed to have a huge and um, many couples coming down from the mainland. And the championship isn't just for the Masters. Oh, we've got over 200 couples. Entries close tomorrow, so we're just waiting on the final numbers. Jess and Clancy competed last year, but this is the first time they've been partners. They have six styles to perfect, but they're not worried. How do you think you'll go in the Taz Open? Pretty, Pretty well. good. Well, better than last time because we had more practice. The championship will be held at the Silver Dome on August 12. Look, the glitz and glamour, you can't beat it. There's nothing like it in Tasmania. Monika Dadson at Southern Cross News. And now look at the day's business of finance with thanks to Tasplan, your local super fund. Another day of strong gains by the major banks and a rally by energy stocks has pushed the share market higher. The ASX 200 index has risen by 29.4 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 79.2 US cents and 107.88 New Zealand cents. To the TSL now, and Hobart City are keen to prove to the naysayers that their season isn't quite done yet, with coach Kane Richter still holding on hopes of finals footy. But it's mission all but impossible for the Ds this weekend, taking on competition powerhouse Clarence. They've already done it once earlier in the year, but very few people will be backing the Ds to topple the ruse a second time. With only percentage keeping them out of the top five, coach Kane Richter says the season isn't over yet. Well, according to a few people, we're, uh, we're no chance. So, um, look, you know, in, in our group, we're, we're pretty confident and, uh, you know, we're continuing to learn each week and, and we're looking forward to a, a massive challenge. Jake Cox finally returns for Clarence. I was going to actually lie and say he wasn't playing, but um, Coxie will definitely play this week. So I actually swear on my life he will play this week. Unless something happens at training tonight, he will play. His presence was sorely missed on the weekend as the Pies outmuscled the flag favourites. Yeah, we probably thought we, we didn't handle the pressure very well. We, there were probably times with our um, transition that we, the option was there. We just bailed out down the line. Um, I think we did it 12 times in the first half. And Lauderdale take on Devonport at home with coach Darren Winter echoing his players' claims that the current Bombers side is bang on the money. Uh, everybody's on the same page. Um, so this is probably the strongest outfit that we've had right across the board, but it's probably been the first time that we've been able to keep them together throughout the year. We can finish on top of the ladder if we win every game and um, the other teams are playing each other, but it's a pretty big ask. But having proved problematic to more fancied sides in recent weeks, Devonport will look to claim a few big scalps on the home stretch. We don't have anything to lose, so um, we're just trying to upset as many teams as we can along the way on the way home. Hobart's Madeline Fashnat has pedalled her way onto cycling's world stage, with a 17-year-old Guildford Young College student taking the gold medal in the individual time trial at the Commonwealth Youth Games in the Bahamas overnight. Stamping her mark as one of the sport's most promising young prospects, Fashnat will now be hoping for a similar result in Sunday's road race. Launceston Tornadoes coach Richard Dickel has voiced his frustration following the side's thrashing at the hands of intrastate rivals the Chargers. The side's playoff hopes are still alive and well, but Dickel is concerned inconsistency may prove the side's undoing. Still sitting nicely at third on the South Conference ladder, but the Torn's ego took a serious battering in the weekend's 26-point loss to the Chargers. We're just not consistent mentally enough uh, for long enough periods of time. After conceding 90 points to their interstate rivals, Dickel says the Torns are too preoccupied with finals. Focusing on the playoffs too early, focusing on uh, things we have absolutely no control over, getting first spot and things like that. we just got to go out there and take care of our business that's right in front of us. The side take on Canberra at home on Saturday night and having won just six games this season, the capital should prove easy work for the Chargers at the deck tomorrow. We've certainly turned a corner there and 
and Saturday night was uh, in terms of the way they approached the game and, and the intensity, particularly on defence, was um, was better than, than we've had the whole time that I've been coaching. Saturday was probably one of the best games I've ever been a part of um, in terms of just we clicked and it was so much fun to play. Having notched up their first away win in five games against the Thunder, the men's side are potentially just one win off top spot on the South Conference ladder. With only two home matches left, they'll look to send a message at the deck tomorrow night against the cellar dwelling capitals. We've really got to get these two wins and kind of snatch the, snatch the two, two or three on the road that we have as well. So we've got to do what we can to keep winning. Good evening. Hobart made it to double figures just today. Launceston 12, Burnie 11, Devonport with 13 top of the list. So you can imagine temperatures were up to 5 degrees below average today. Bit of a nip in the air. That was due to a cold southerly airstream which also had snow down to 400 metres. Most of the showers over the western half. The best rainfall today 19 millimetres at Borrowdale Plains. 856 metres above sea level, 24 k's from Mole Creek. Low head and Bridport 12 degrees. Wynyards and Helens, Friendly Beaches, Bushy Park and the Islands 11. Strawn nine today, and after a minus three overnight, Liaweenie couldn't make it into positive territory all day. The large cold air mass is easily seen over our region. Uh, plenty more moving off into the Tasman as well. There's cloud spiralling around a low in the southwest and over WA, and a middle level cloud band is over the bight. Closer in in the central north and northeast, missed most of the cloud today as it swirled around. Tomorrow's chart has the high over southeast Australia extending a ridge our way. A complex area of low pressure south of the bight shoots out a trough as a front also starts its move across the map. The southerlies at 15 to 20 knots will ease ahead of tending more variable and then northwesterly during the day at 10 to 15 knots later on. A road weather alert warns of icy roads across the state again. A strong wind warning for waters between South East Cape and Sandy Cape. Friday in Hobart, a sunny 12 degrees. Can't complain too much. 12 also for Hewanville and Campania after a morning frost. Launceston can expect some morning fog and frost, a mostly sunny afternoon and 12. 12 also for Devonport, sunny for Georgetown, 11 the maximum. For Burnie, mostly sunny and 12, 13 the high for Strawn. Morning frost for Wynyard, getting up to 12 later. And for St Helens, sunny and 13, 13 for Swansea, Port Arthur. Maybe a morning shower clearing, 11 the top later. On Saturday, areas of morning frost and fog with showers extending over most districts. Showers gradually easing during the day on Sunday with snow to 700 metres. Another frost on Monday and mostly fine apart from a shower later over the west. Showers in Perth tomorrow with that system nearby. Sunny in Adelaide, a frosty start in Melbourne and Canberra. Partly cloudy for Sydney but fine and sunny for the other centres. Partly cloudy in Hobart currently, it's 8 degrees, 7 degrees in Launceston, clear in Devonport and currently 6 degrees. Another cold night and a cold day tomorrow, Joe. But of course it will be Friday, a day you like to take pretty easy, so I'll see you for happy hour. <laughs> we do love Friday happy hour, don't we? Thank you very much, Murph. That's all from the team for now. Have a great evening and we'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.